what an absolute load of trash. Do what you want with that, Michael. <laughs> I think the way that we run our project helps us really get to know our clients um, right from the get-go. So the sales team obviously are the ones that bring in the business, but then we always make a real point, don't we, if we can, of making sure that we see the clients in person for our yeah. kickoff meeting. And even though we're a remote business now, face-to-face -face time is so important still, especially at the beginning of a project. When you're usually facing a sort of two or three hour meeting, that's quite a hard thing to do yeah. on Zoom. So to get everybody in the same room, keep it light, keep yeah. it happy. It's a very yeah. exciting thing for the clients to be doing, kicking off a project. That for me really helps get things going and talking on the phone as much as possible. It's more about getting to know them as people so that we can try and understand. Love the chat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's trying to understand what they're about and where they're coming from. And sometimes that's just about what they did at the weekend or if they've got any family, what they see this being, this product being in the future. I think for me, it's definitely about the people and obviously the, the, the like industry they're in helps to do that. But I think it's definitely about the people for me so that if I speak to them two weeks down the road, I know what they did the previous weekend or I can ask how yeah. how like their children are or what they're up to. It's just all about that pure building relationship one on one. And I think that's why we take things so personally. Yeah. There's okay. that famous piece of advice, isn't there? The first five minutes of any conversation yeah. should not be yeah. about the point of the conversation. It should be yeah. how's so and so doing yeah. or how's your holiday? Yeah, or exactly. what's going on with your garden or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. So it's, good, it's good to get a bit of context for the the client as well as and then their experience and yeah. how much how much experience they will have had in a project like this and how hands-on we need to be in terms of leading them. Yeah. And I think that makes us more passionate about their project because we want to do the best for them. So we want to make sure like you would, you'd want for a friend or a family, you want to make sure that what we're giving them is the best that we've got. And, and because everything comes past us before it goes to the client, we're the first people to see it. And if we don't think it's anything, you know, it's not quite right, or we don't think that's what their vision was, or that's what they were looking for, we can relay that back to the team before it gets to them. So it's kind of that first filter before it gets to the client. And I think knowing the client personally helps us kind of bring that passion forward and helps us and advocate yeah, yeah definitely advocate for them i think that's the main the main go-to between us and the studio that we look at from their point of view so as the project manager walk me through what our process is like from from your point of view from the project managers sure so we always start the project with a kickoff meeting um, which would be sort of the coming together of, of the clients that dedicated team so an account manager a creative and a developer and it's usually a pretty hefty meeting. It's usually a couple of hours where we try and like get into the bones of, of the client's business and what they do and who they are. Um, and from there, we would go away and get stuck into some initial kind of creative concepts to share with the client. And it's a really collaborative process. So we would go through several rounds where you know we present the ideas and they have the chance to give their feedback and give their input. Um, kind of as, as much or as little as, as they want to. And so, yeah, we make sure that the client's really, really happy with the, with the, with the creative side of things before we sort of sign off and, and go into build. Um, and the build for us, I guess, is the, the really exciting bit, like where we see things come to life. Once the site's been built, we would kind of share that with the client again for them to feedback and, and really feel part of the process um, before we go live. So what's the most important part of that process, do you think? Like f for you and for the client, what do you really have to like the, the kick engage off. with them the, the kick off and the scoping I think has got to be really on point um, because the more we know about the client and the more we understand the project in the brief the better we can we can deliver and I guess the more you've got written down to begin with and agreed the smoother the process of the build and the testing and so on is then going to be because yeah. it's not going to go back and forth in terms of questions or things that have to be added in you know that's yeah. all been discussed and sorted and makes everything smoother and quicker. Yeah, and it's also the, the crucial point of that relationship building, which we talked about earlier. Yeah. That's the, the first interaction that we're having with them in depth. If we can kind of get the relationship right at that point, yeah. the rest of the process should be a lot smoother. And I think also from a communication point of view, where we get really excited about the build element, that is kind of it that takes the longest, isn't yeah. it? And it's always like the bit where we have to keep in contact with the client a little bit yeah. more just to make sure they're ready ready for the to populate because I think so many people underestimate yeah. what a big job it is to to get content ready to go onto a website from photography to video to just the you know the content itself I think that's really important to make sure that they're prepared 
for what that's yeah exactly because once we've built it it's almost like right can we go live you're like well actually it's all got to be populated yet and we've got to make sure the look and the feels there the tone of voice and I think that's probably for me the biggest bit that's underestimated from a client point of view but I think our process works start with that that in-depth kickoff kind of briefing session where ideally we'd be in person and we'd kind of meet up and get a real feel for the client and and their brand um, and it would be an account manager and a, and a creative and we would just yeah try and really get into the into the bones of of the client and what what they do and who they are and we would then go away and come back to them with some initial identity concepts so perhaps two or three different versions of, of a logo that we think would work for them and that's where the collaboration really kicks in and they kind of give us their feedback and let us know what they do and don't like and they can kind of pick bits from yeah. from the different concepts and from there we would work together with them to produce a, a, a final brand identity um, and we try and keep a really heavy focus on sort of assets you know it's not just about the logo it's about how does that fit with the rest of their brand so how's that going to work on a website how's that going to work on um, printed collateral and things like that so is it the things that come with the logo yeah and exactly. how they might get used so different shapes or colors yeah. or exactly or how that's going to work with imagery on yeah. a website or things like that i love it when they reduce from a logo and then you've just got the icon so like just a snippet of the logo exactly yeah so so different lockups how they're going to use it on social media it's really about kind of kind of making a like a package for them that's going to yeah. going to cover all bases yeah. I think what brings it to life is when they do everything in black and white and then they add the different palettes of colour and then it just looks so different from like whichever palette is chosen where they do the different options for the colour. I think that's what, what makes the logo. I think they, in black and white, I think they can look brilliant, but the colour's chosen yeah. for clients. And I love it when they like um, just sort of slip in an accent colour that the client would never have maybe thought of and they thought yeah. oh my god we never thought of using bright pink or whatever colour it was but it really lifts the logo and out. it says something yeah different. definitely yeah. yeah that's what's so fun is when a client lets us kind of push the boat out and yes. from the kickoff where they we start and they're thinking maybe they want something quite conservative yeah. and then by the end we've actually presented them something totally different than what yeah. they thought they wanted yeah. and they love it yeah and I think the fact that they've seen it grow and they've known that it, this logo has been built from keywords that they, they've liked to use or things that they're passionate about. So if anybody said to them, oh, where did your logo come from? The client can actually go, well, actually, well, I can tell you this. Yeah, and I think with one, yeah, with one of our clients, I think we even did a video of, of the logo literally morphing from, from nothing or even from an old logo and then into the new logo they've got now. I think that's really good content so that they can see the difference rather than just okay, here's our new logo. They actually can explain how they got to where they got. So for me, a good client has to start with having an open mind, I think. Um, it's always brilliant to have a brief. We love a good brief, but we also love contributing new ideas. So for someone to be a bit too rigid in what they want to achieve or how they think things should be done, it's not the most conducive to creativity, I don't think. So somebody that comes in with an open mind as well as lots of ideas is exactly who we'd, who we'd like. A good client for me is someone who shares our values, someone who's fun, who's easy to talk to, who wants to be part of the process, who enjoys the creativity and the, and the collaboration of the process. Someone who's excited about it. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and enthusiastic and probably has a bit of an open mind. A client that's passionate about what they do and gets excited about the prospect of what we're gonna deliver. I think when you, when you first, whether it's the brand that you've designed or whether it's a website you've designed, anything, when you first sort of do the big reveal, it's always good to have like, like that high energy of the client's passion coming through and they're like, yeah, this is great. Even if it wasn't quite 100% what they expected, the fact that they have got the high energy and they're excited to see it and they, they love it. I think that for me, I think the passion, they've got to be in it as well and as much as we are. To, to be that kind of person, to have that much enthusiasm about. They've definitely got to be engaged with it, haven't they? Because I'm not just saying this because that's what we do, but genuinely, surely one of the most exciting things yeah. about having a business is designing a new website for it or designing a new brand for it. It should be fun. It is really fun and we make it fun. Yeah. So yeah. be excited, be ready and be engaged. Yeah. If a client's on a retainer with us, they've got access to absolutely everything that Giant Peach does. It's a full studio access retainer. So they can have time with us each month to have photography and video done, for example. Any aspect of marketing, SEO, PPC, social media work, 
or we can look at their website for them. So any bits of development that need doing, any new blocks they want to add to the site, any new pages, all the way through to copywriting. So that process kind of looks like us sitting down together at the beginning of the month, looking at the priorities, figuring out how much we can fit in on that particular month and what the priorities are and getting it done. So a lot of communication, a lot of organisation our end to make sure that the whole studio knows what they're doing, but a really great option to get lots of stuff done for a lot of our clients. And how much sort of input are we able to have? Are we able to sort of focus on their goals with them or do they come to us with what they want us to do? A lot of the time they will come to us with goals. Um, usually a client will come to us with a retainer because there are things that they want to achieve. But having said that, we might say to them, well, if we're doing that, we might as well do this. You know, what's the point in creating a video for you that you want to use on social media if we're not then saying, well, let's create some templates for you to put that yeah. content into. So there's synergy there, definitely. Again, it's not just, here's our list, let's do it. Um, and again, if it's a development issue, there might be quite something really quite complex that they want us to look at. And it's not perhaps as simple as what they originally thought, but we can come with ideas that elevate it and make it sometimes even simpler for them, but perform better too. So we are like their marketing department. Exactly, for a lot of clients, we are an external marketing department that feels like part of the team. You know, I talk to my, all of my retainer clients multiple times a week and on their specific days we're in communication all day long. Dawn, do you want to tell us about our sort of longer term clients and how your relationship is with them, what you yeah. do for them, how you keep them happy? From our point of view at Giant Peach, our existing clients are the core. You know, it's, it's what we're about. We're, we're not about building somebody a website or doing some branding and then just letting them go off. You know, we want to make sure that they grow that brand. We want to make sure that they've got access to us so that we can advise them along the, along the way and make sure that they've got the element and they're using the assets and anything that we've built for them correctly. So on a regular basis, I keep in contact with all of our clients, depending on what service they've used, but for every service to make sure that they're happy with what they've got, if there's anything more we can help them with, if we can bring any more proactive ideas to the table for them. Um, lots of clients don't necessarily want stuff done all the time and that's absolutely fine, but as you know, I love a chat. So it's nice to just go meet with them, have a coffee, catch up, how's the business going? Like we were saying earlier, we, we like to get to know our clients. We like to make sure that we've got a relationship with them. So it is just like catching up with, with nothing underlying. It, it is literally just like, how are things going? Is there anything else you, you need help with? And sometimes you forget things. You might have built a website, populated it, and then three months later, oh, I forgot how to do that bit. Or is there any chance you could just do this for me? You know, absolutely, that's what we're there for. That's what being a Giant Peach client means. It means you can pick up the phone and you can just ask us a question and we can call upon whoever within the studio to help answer that question if I don't know it. Normally I know the answer, but if I don't know it, it's just making sure that they feel comfortable that they can do that. And it's not, it's not awkward or it's not like phoning and asking for a service all the time. It's just phoning for a chat and, and picking our brains being in different industries, going out to see different clients. I have built relationships with them all. They, they are technically my friends. They're in my phone. You know, it's just that element that they can feel, that they can pick up the phone and ask me questions. I can go out and see them. We can just have a coffee, take biscuits, have, have a chat, just catch up on what their business is doing and how we can help grow them. You know, we do take everything so personally that once we've built something from brand upwards, we want to see them grow. We want to see them succeed. And I think that's what sets us aside. We don't just build a project for a client and then just go, right, tick that one off the list um, next. You know, it is very much, we, we want to be part of what they're doing. We want to help them as much as we can and even include them in stuff we do for Giant Peach, invite them along to our events and, and make sure they've got access to other clients. We work in so many different industries. It's so lovely to bring different clients together that might actually be able to help each other which I think working for an agency is definitely sets us aside from that. For if you just worked in a marketing department of a larger corporate company, you've only got yourselves where I can bring clients together from different industries and make sure that they're using or they're getting the best. And, and that makes our life easier. I went to my first client meeting. So these clients are lovely and they've got um, their architects and they, they're in this really old building. Um, which you go up like the windy stairs to get to it. It's like a beautiful, beautiful building. Um, and 
Myself and my colleague went in to have this meeting and, and everything was fine. And she introduced me as a new person to Giant Peach. So I, but bizarrely, they had these stools or these chairs around the table and they only had three legs. And I was like, oh, that's interesting, a three-legged chair, never mind, I'm sure it's fine. So we sit down and I set my laptop up and I'm all good to go and I'm ready to go through my spiel in my head of like trying to, you know, be good and make a good impression for Giant Peach. And, um, and I leant over to show uh, one of my clients something on the screen and the chair just went from underneath me. And I mean, it completely went to the point where I was just like scrabbling, grabbed the client who was sat next to me and brought her down with me. So I'm just on the floor, like three months into this new job, absolutely mortified, but also just laughing hysterically. So I get there like, oh my God, they were like really concerned. I'm sure they were probably like, well, there's a blame, there's a claim. But I was, so I was on the floor like, oh my God, oh my God. So they helped me up and they're like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, 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 I'm absolutely fine. I promise. Sat the chair up, sat back on it and it went for me again. And I was like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? Why can't I sit on a chair? And I did go back and see them actually um, last year. Um, or for another meeting that I had with them at the end of last year and they even mentioned it then and this is I'm 12 years in now so this must have happened like 12 years ago and they're like oh just be careful on the chair door I think like, every okay. time that they have a new supplier or a new oh. client of theirs and they yeah, probably yeah. use that story yeah, yeah they might the chairs they yeah, find the yeah. chairs <laughs> just, just be careful what shocked me is they still had the chairs I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't wheel me out a four-legged chair just because they knew it that would have been a funny thing. yeah no, I think that would have been better if they just moved out the four-legged chair to go it's all right door coming I better put, better get her a proper chair rather than the you know real like contemporary one which clearly I cannot sit on but, oh, yeah. but they're still a client they are still a client maybe they feel sorry for me but they are still a client so it just goes to prove we can overcome anything it's fine <laughs> I think the most challenging thing is really nailing that brief at the start of the project I think that's the, the most important thing is that we really understand where the client's coming from and what they want to achieve so that we can deliver something that, that meets their expectations. And you know, still sometimes there are times where we deliver something that's not quite what they had expected or occasionally we have a client who says, you know, I'll know it when I see it. And those are, those are the clients where actually it's really fun to work with them because that's, I mean, that's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think if we can nail the brief every time at the start, so we've got a really clear idea what the client wants, what they're expecting from us, and then that's where we can we can do the magic and deliver something really brilliant. And at the same time, I suppose we need to make sure that they know where Giant Peach is coming from as well. So we've got to make sure that not only do they understand or we understand their expectations, they need to understand what's expected of them. Yeah. Because I imagine um, the reason why you know projects run smoothly is because the communication is open from both sides. So they understand exactly what the process is, but also what's expected of them to be able to deliver the project that, that they want to deliver. I think the biggest challenge when it comes to projects or any type of work we're doing for clients is making sure that the client understands what's expected of them. So Sarah's talked about how we've got to know what's expected of us, but it's a give and take in a lot of these situations. So. There is a lot that the client has to do to prepare. You know, we've when they come to us with a great brief, you know, that's a big tick. Our expectations are that they probably have thought about things a little, um, which is always helpful. I think another big expectation that we have as a client is when it sort of gets towards the closing parts of a project, when the build is coming to an end, is some idea from them about how they want the finished product to look for them not in terms of design because we've done all that for them but what kind of pages you know the, the real nitty gritty we're here to help with a lot of it but we can't go into as much detail as they can it's their business they've got to know you know how much content they want on this site and they've got to prepare that content we're obviously here to help but there's nothing more frustrating for a client than having this incredible website that's been built but then they can't use it because it's not quite ready. And that's where the biggest challenge I think comes in sometimes, getting it all ready to go once it's built. I think one of the biggest challenges that we face as an agency is this kind of chicken and egg situation that we often have between design and content. 
and the way that presents itself across different types of projects. So for example, if we've created a website, it's built, it might be a while before that content's ready to go in. And that could be because the client's been completely overwhelmed by the amount that they've had to do despite having been prepared for it by us. You know, it happens to everybody, things come up, you know, but it can be quite frustrating for, for, you know, everyone, especially the client, to have this incredible new website that they can't wait to start using, but it's not quite ready because the content hasn't been done. And similarly, with a, with a design project, depending on what it is, for example, a brochure, we need to have that content ready before we really get into the sort of tail end of the design process because it's got to fit, it's got to look right. So I think, yeah, that sort of chicken and egg, which comes first, design content, making sure things hit at the right time, making sure people can find the time to get that done is probably one of the biggest challenges slash holdups that a project might face. We aren't massively corporate. We speak to our clients. We're honest with our clients as we would be with, with each other. So I think that makes a massive difference. We're not necessarily, um, our processes aren't set in stone that we've got template wording. We will speak to our clients and adjust how we speak to our clients depending on the vibe and the relationship we've got with them and maybe that's why we're not embarrassed when we yeah i'm fucking my brain to try and think of something embarrassing that's happened i'm like eh, well yeah. you know make a typo you make a typo right it's yeah. not like you're emailing a lawyer and the world's gonna come crashing down yeah. or if you fall off a chair in a meeting they're not yeah. gonna like <laughs> yeah. run for the hill no exactly yeah because we're all human right exactly and i think we want to work with humans yeah um, you know who and cares like, and I think with, cre with creativity, I think that's really important because it, nothing's set in stone, nothing's black and white. So I think it's got to be movable, it's got to be flexible. And I think the way we speak to our clients and the honesty if we think, yeah, that will work or yeah, that won't work. I think, like you said, having the clients having the open mind to understand that um, technology changes and trends change. So therefore their idea they, they might have had six months ago actually has evolved into something different yeah. you've got to be honest with yeah. people haven't yeah. you you know i wouldn't want to be sold something or someone just to say yes for the sake of it when they knew yeah. that it wasn't the right decision yeah for sure the thing i love most about working for giant peach is from a practical perspective the, the sort of flexibility that we have um, i'm really lucky that i have a 20-hour week i have my fixed days that i do the majority of my work on but if there's ever a school nativity or a doctor's appointment or whatever it is it's never questioned whether it's okay to do as long as there's nothing really important that you're missing for it um, and I think that stems from the fact that James and the senior team are very trusting of everybody that works for them you know as long as the work gets done and it gets done to a high standard which it does then your time is yours to manage um, as long as the clients are happy and as long as you get the work done, as I said, yeah, there is that trust that means that it's a very relaxed, flexible place to work, which for me at the moment with two little children is just great. Um, I love the team, obviously. We are so lucky with who we work with. Um, we just have them so much fun and every day is a joy. There are certain people who just make you smile, which is lovely. And the clients, the clients are great. Again, we're really lucky. I think when you're passionate about what you do and you do good work, that really shines through in how the atmosphere is within the office. And our processes help with that too. You know, you don't come into work and go, oh God, you know, what's going on with this? What's going on with that? Everybody knows where they stand. You know, every day we have a meeting that ensures that what is happening that day is all laid out. And if there are any issues, everybody's so happy to help and step in. You know, if you've ever got a problem or more hands are needed, it's never in doubt that you're going to get that help. So it's just a great place to be. It's a and great you place to be. Always been in um, like accounting, no. have you? No, I've always been in very much client-facing roles, but I started my career in PR. Um, not really traditional PR. It was always very creative. So we used to call it. Our firm kind of pretended we invented the, the phrase com creative communications. So I was quite lucky in that when I started, it was traditional PR. And as time went on, I was there nearly 10 years. I saw the kind of evolution from, um, 
you know, earned media being something that was in print, so magazines and newspapers, through to social media and digital. And a great idea would work wherever you tried to put it. And if you had a great idea, it would go viral. So there's lots of crossover. And I learned a lot, obviously, by you know, looking after clients in that role, which kind of translates over here. Um, and in that time, I was doing lots of business development as well, which is kind of how I started at Giant Peach. I would help James and I would help um, our old marketing director with events and with sales and new business and bits and pieces on, on socials as well. And over the last few years, so that's going back seven years, but over the last few years, I've done a lot more in terms of looking after clients, actually getting more involved in the websites and every day learning new things, doing different things. So that's another reason I love it. Every day is a challenge, get to learn every day. It's great. I just love the variation of it. I deal with so many different clients in different industries, so it's never boring. It's never mundane. It's never the same thing over and over. So the fact that I come in and deal with different clients in different industries, you're, you're almost changing hats from depending on the type of clients that they've got. So some people work from like business to business customers. Um, so your, your marketing and your advice is very different to those that are working with B2C customers. So it's very, it's just always, I'm always on the ball. I think, and I think you've got to be, and I think that's what keeps us going. I think in the 12 years that we've evolved as Giant Peach, I think the, the clients have evolved with us. So there's sometimes in a very bizarre way, sometimes we all of a sudden get lots of foodie clients at the same time, or we get lots of solicitors at the same time. So it's really random how the trend moves. And by doing that, it means that you can switch experience so something that worked for solicitors actually you can pull on that for clients in different industries that might work for people in the food industry and you're like oh actually that that's really cool functionality on their website could also work on their website which makes which enables us to go out to the clients with our proactive ideas to say what about this have you thought about that we can help increase your visits or brand awareness or social media you know it's just really good that we can actually cross like across our experience, um, um, oh, cross our experience amongst the different. Oh, sorry, no, that's wrong. Okay, um, that we can actually share our experience am uh, amongst the different industries out there. You know, I quite often have clients where I had this one situation where I had one client who. Um, specialised in surrogacy. So they were a sur surrogacy solicitors. So they were desperate to find people that were, you know, that were um, able to be surrogates and help people bring children into this world. And on the flip side, I think in the same day, I went to our other client who was a fostering agency who were desperate for parents to look after the children. I was like, oh, if I could just merge everything, then the whole world would be happy. It's, it's kind of that sort of thing. So I love it when we can actually share functionality across different industries. I think it just pulls on experience.